Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So, I'm finally trying to actually turn some telescope mirrors on the diamond turning lathe. And I'm about to, you know, do our first test of, of one of these things, uh, try and make one. And I figured it'd be a good excuse to look a little more at the overall workflow of using the lathe, uh, specifically preparing the rough blanks to go onto it. Uh, we'll make another video about the second half of that process, which is actually the turning and the metrology. But anyways, I've talked a little bit in the past about the, the hail coupling system, which decided to use for the, the lathe, um, which is what you see here. It's this quasi kinematic coupling, um, loosely based off of a patent that Leighton Hale um, came up with. Basically, you have these, these features on both mating parts. This is the piece that's on the spindle nose, and they interlock like that. They're just held together with the drawbar, in my case. And this ends up being a fairly repeatable uh, coupling for doing your work holding. <clears throat> you can machine this feature into the back of your part. You can machine the feature into you know the back of a chuck, like you see here. Um, but today, what I'm gonna be doing is one, an example of an integral uh, mount. So this is the blank for the mirror that I'm going to turn. That's the mirror right there. It's a 2.75 inch diameter uh, F6 spherical mirror. It's spherical because that makes the metrology a little easier. Again, I'll talk about that later. And that's a 69 millimeter aperture and 420 millimeter focal length, depending on how you round. That was not, not on purpose. I just converted that for the sake of this video and found out when I was converting. Pretty weird. Anyhow, this blank has been roughed out uh, as far as having the hail coupling machined on it, but now it needs to get the actual mirror feature um, roughed out. There's the mirror, uh, with that 16 and a half inch, 420 millimeter focal length, there's a 29 millimeter uh, sag on this mirror. So not a whole lot of material to be removed off here, but certainly too much for the diamond turning lathe to remove. So the essence of the challenge here is to machine that feature uh, into here, get it as close to near net as possible, but have it be extremely, you know, well aligned, concentric, and parallel with the mounting features we've machined on the back. So let's go to the machine and look at how I plan to do that. Okay, so we've got the mounting features machined. Now we wanna hold it the other way around so we can access this side and machine the mirror blank as close as possible to final size. The mounting features are, you know, it's a kinematic coupling. It defines, defines it in or fixes it in six degrees of freedom. You know, these six faces here define a plane, they define an X, Y, and Z location. So ideally we wanna be holding this as close as possible, you know, to where the, the point where the plane this defines is exactly aligned with the X and Y plane of the machine. Uh, and we wanna have our G54 set to be the center point of the XY location that this defines. So that's where this comes in. This is the fixture. And you can see it's the same same hill coupling feature there. You put this in the vise and then you know this you know, this might get you most of the way. I'm sure we could put that in there and, and hold it and machine it like that. But you know how do you know that this went in at the right angle? How do you know it's not like that? So I've got a program that I run where after we load this in, we get a rough X, Y, zero by just you know probing as you would. And then what it does is it decks off the top of this. It just removes a couple thou from the uh, flat features and then comes in with the 45 degree chamfer mill, just like how we machined all these services and also takes down takes down those another couple of hours or so. Then that ensures that 
the x and y, the x, y, zero of this is exactly in the center of our part because we just machined something that is going to have this come in and mate perfectly with it. Same thing with tilt, right? If we've just machined these features in place, when we put the mating part on it, it's going to be held exactly level with respect to those features. And so when we come in, all we have to do is probe the top of this part. Now, we don't even have to do that. Here the Z is not critical, so remember just probe the top of this part. No other probing needs to be done, no other alignment, no indicating or anything. We just machine the chuck in place, just as you would like a super glue chuck or something. Uh, this, in this case, it just is, you know, getting us a couple extra degrees of freedom sort of aligned to the machine, machined in place. That way, we can do that, machine this, throw it on the lathe, and then as good as the mating coupling is on the nose of the spindle, that's how good it'll run. Uh, this sort of eliminates alignment errors from, you know, flipping and trying to indicate stuff in and doing all that. So let's go ahead and throw this guy in. It's held in, you know, same way, just with a little bolt to act as a drawbar, comes up from the bottom machine these features and then put it on the lathe. Okay, the top's been decked off. The whole mounting everything has just been brought down by two, two thou, remachined uh, in C2. Now when I put this guy on, just like that, and install the screw, basically just hit cycle start on the next program and it will make all the features as aligned with that rear hail coupling as physically possible given this machine. It's set up and we're taking the first, very first pass here. You can see it started to clean up on the uh, outer diameter there, but it is no longer cutting um, all the way at this point. It's likely because of thermal expansion of the spindle of the Haas while it was getting roughed out. It started on the outside and worked its way in, so the spindle likely grew as it uh, as it heated up throughout the tool path. So we're not cutting pretty much anything right now, but let's take a few more pass, passes, two tenths depth of cut, and then we'll see how we did. Compensation on a Linux CNC. Finishing pass, roughing the finishing pass underway.